the Germans that had searched for the skulls, not not the Soviet uh, KGB. Well, but I mean, it's a kids' movie, right? I mean, we're not we're not really thinking of this as being any sort of serious scientific treatise on 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 the crystal skulls. I mean, this is a movie for twelve year olds. Um, yeah, but you know what? He in the previous Indiana Jones movies, he, at least he tried to stay close somehow to 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 the fact. And he, he's not Spielberg is not a stupid yeah. personality. He does things with purpose. I I, I I believe. It's just lately I don't think accuracy is one of his uh, hallmarks. Gosh, I wouldn't be expecting accuracy in an Indi- any Indiana Jones movie. I mean, honestly, sure. I wouldn't. I, that, I think you're, you're you're elevating it to a purpose. I don't think it it has. I mean, I think the you have to remember the original title for it was uh, Indiana Jones versus the Saucer Men from Mars. I mean, it, it's much more to do with the 1950s matinee movies than it has to do with you know anything that I think is some sort of serious statement about science. But um, but, but that having been said, um, I did think it was interesting. My wife made the observation, and I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago, that the crystal skulls themselves, when they have those, when they handle those in the film, those would have to weigh like a ton. And they're whipping them around like they are hollow plastic. And I, I so I, it, 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 it's, it's an interesting point, especially with the story that came out in the last couple of weeks or so about the crystal skulls that do exist, the ones that we do know about, have been re-examined. Uh, and once more, scientists have found that they don't believe that they are any older than the mid, uh, you know, 19th century, somewhere in the 1850s. And they were vi- very likely made in Europe, not pre-Columbian, mm-hmm. not made in South America. But where are you with that, with the with the crystal skulls that we have in museums right now? I agree to that. I think the first skulls, you know, basically appeared in early 1860s. They were very small, maybe, you know, somewhere just like an inch and a half high. And that, that's, that's what was one in the British Museum. Um, you know, some of the, I, I do know that they came, the so-called Paris skulls came from uh, a gentleman by the name of Eugene Boban. He had an antiquity store in Mexico and then in Paris in the 1870s. And he is the one that uh, produced the so-called second generation of skulls. You know, he couldn't sell it anything because in Mexico they considered them to be fakes. So he started selling them in New York in 18, 1886. And then there was the third generation. I think that's the larger size. And, and they appeared in, in 1930s. And the, one of the most famous ones we know now is the one that uh, Mitchell Hedges skull made of uh, clear quartz crystal. And it weighs about 11 pounds, which is, you know, which is big. And it's like five inches high and five inches wide, seven inches long. Nothing like uh, was shown in the movie. Yeah. What, uh, and so what, I mean, other than the, the fakes, which we know, we're all, if we're on the same page on that, all the ones that are in the museums are fakes. The, the ones you mentioned, the early ones, the little ones, um, at least I read somewhere that those are very likely, or at least mm-hmm. m- most scientists believe that they are probably linked to early Catholic practice in Mexico, not something that's pre-Columbian, but rather sometime after Columbus, after the conversion of native peoples to uh, to Catholicism, that they started carving these uh, skulls for counting purposes or for religious purposes. Where are you with that? It's quite possible with, the, uh, with that. I, um, you know, my, my research was uh, a little bit different. It's not the uh, even uh, genuineness of, uh, of uh, the skulls. It's, it's, it's what people imply them to be, and uh, Nazis... Uh, you know, because of Hitler, because of his, uh, you know, belief, beliefs in rituals and other, you know, mumbo jumbo, they believed the skulls to possess power, and they wanted to get them, just like they wanted to get the, um, you know, Ar- Ark of Covenant and uh, other objects right, that they then... consider to be full of ritual um, content. Right. So they spared no money to get them. Like the Spear of Destiny. Absolutely, the, that too. The, and, uh, you know, they, they also went to the mounds in, in my native Ukraine, and they, you know, went through each and, 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 and to many of them, trying to find ancient knowledge, and, you know, skiffs and, uh, and other, um, basically, legacy. And uh, they had a lot of money to spend. They spent more money on the, on the projects, of similar project than they spent on the uh, atomic bomb, which is good for us. 
Yeah, really, exactly. Glad they had their priorities set that way. Uh, but let's talk about that a little bit more. So what do what do, what have you been able to uncover about the Nazi pursuit of the crystal skulls? Because I got to tell you, because there is a great Russian uh, historian uh, who has incredible sources. Uh, her name is Samoylova. And basically, uh, years ago, I chanced upon that story and I started studying more. Uh, apparently, uh, there was a Nazi expedition in 1943. And on a yacht that was uh, purchased by the German intelligence, on behest of the so-called Anerba, which is a, a Nazi organization in the SS, which was uh, uh, which had the mission to collect ritual objects, and they came to Brazil in uh, late 19, I would say beginning of 1944, with agents that they left basically dropped ashore. And uh, those agents were, uh, their mission was to, to, to steal, to get the uh, skull that was uh, located in a, in a museum in Brazil. But they were so inept that they got caught. That's one explanation. The other explanation is that people on the shore knew that they were coming or were guided to find them. And uh, in my article, I mentioned an Italian engineer who was almost killed because he had participated in the creation of a, a secret, uh, secret center for uh, Hitler, and all other engineers were, were killed. This guy survived by a chance, and he was guided from Italy, he and his daughter, the only surviving members of the family, by an unknown group of friends. They thought they would be communists, but apparently they were not, uh, to Brazil. And in Brazil, they were the ones that actually discovered the Nazi infiltrators, uh, agents that had to steal the uh, skull in the guise of uh, Canadian archaeologists. But it's not as simple as that. The guy who, the gentleman who was in, if I can call him that, who was in charge of the, of the, um, of the uh, uh, yacht, Passim, uh, uh, Heinrich uh, Garbers, after the war, after a few other missions, some successful, some not, he was actually uh, interrogated by, by the uh, CIA of the time in 1945, who wanted to know about his missions. And um, he spent some years in prison, and then he died in 1963. And I think he carried quite a few secrets uh, to the grave with him, unless he told them to the Americans. Because that mission is not very clear. I had another account not long ago i read it after my article was published in an american news uh, i'm sorry in an american book that had stated that the mission to brazil uh consisted of only two people one of whom was black from you know south america who actually went on uh voluntarily to to help nazis which i find a little bit outlandish but you know who knows what happened and no mention whatsoever about the mission to steal the skulls. It's like somebody's trying to, to, to hush it up. I don't want to go into conspiracies, but even some oil of us uh, information, despite the knowledge that she has, she would not mention Brazil as the country that the German intelligence had sent their agents to. Now, those agents, again, were, ca- again, were captured. They were not very... Uh, were able to do their work, I would say, you know, not maybe too full of intelligence. And they were captured in the jungles outside of the town in Brazil, but they were able to be in the museum one night. They just couldn't find the skull. Mm. They wanted to get it. They didn't get it. That, and, but there is secrecy around the story that I can't comprehend completely. Well, and that's, that's an interesting um, account even just in and of itself. I mean, I, I don't know whether sometimes – the greatest secrecy is ineptitude, right? Mm-hmm. Where we can't figure out why things happen because there's no reasonable explanation for why events transpired because the people were so inept, they weren't following any kind of logic. It just, uh, it's when things break down sometimes, you know, that it creates its own kind of secrecy. Uh, but the, so then you don't believe then that if we gathered all the crystal skulls of the world together, that anything would happen? I don't know. I don't know if there are what there are different uh, types of skulls. I do not know if we gather them together. Uh, if 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 there are genuine skulls with powers that are being attributed to them, that nothing would happen. I don't know enough. 
I, I, you know, my, I, I, it's, to me, it's fascinating to follow up, to, op- to open up trails, to see what's going on. 